Hey guys, what's up? I wanted to come on here and um, do a package opening. Uh, this is a package that I got from Frank Hill. I think you can read that. I think so, yeah. You can read that from Frank Hill. It's Frank. Um, a long, little bit of a story that goes with this. Um, a little bit of story, I should say, that goes with this. Uh, Frank wanted to send me this package like months prior before its official release. Uh, even while what's in here was in theaters uh, for the short time that it was until what happened, until this whole virus thing swept the nation and the world. So basically, he wanted to send me this. He said he was going to pre-order it and everything, and, um, well, that's what he did. That's what he did eventually. Um, now you have to understand that, a little bit, like, a, a little bit of a story here. There's, if it wasn't for, despite how you might feel about a certain president that we have right now, if it wasn't for him coming up with the idea, along with the Republicans and even the Democrats, to do this $1,200 a stimulus package or 12 million or whatever it was this huge record setting uh, um, stimulus package where everybody got something every American got something uh, deposited in their account or is getting something or has gotten something via paper check if it wasn't for them doing that none of us would be able to do the things that we're doing like for me you know, I, I was able to get a GoPro finally, and that's how I'm filming this. And for Frank, if it wasn't for the stimulus, he wouldn't have been able to take care of some of the bills and uh, bills and situations that oh, some of the bills and payments that he had to take care of, as well as be able to finally go out and send stuff to various people. And from what I understand, on the day he sent this, he was also sending a lot, a lot of other packages. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, when the one thing that Frank Hill, it's Frank does, when he sends out packages, he likes to give the recipient, recipients, I should say, of those packages, the tracking number, so that they could track, um, they could track the uh, package along with him, make sure it gets to their destination. Well. He sent me a tracking number, all right, but he sent me the tracking number for somebody else's package in Osage, New York. He finally was able to correct that and give me the right one, and it came today. Day, or should I say, it came yesterday. Now it's January. Now it's June third. Yesterday was June second. Originally, it was supposed to come on the first, but because of what's happening in cities across the nation right now, I think it was a little delayed. It caused a little bit of a delay, I should say. So it finally came today. But what's funny, oh, yesterday I should say, but what's interesting is the mail ended up coming twice. It ended up coming twice. Once with like the regular junk mail, the newspaper stuff and all that. Advertisements. The second time it came around 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Now what's interesting about that is usually about the time the mail shows up, it's around like late morning, early to mid afternoon. It doesn't show up but once, maybe twice if it has to. The so when the mail so when I, so when someone so when I went and checked the mail and you know got the um, advertisements, the junk mail and all that, there was no package. Even though the tracking number said by today, 6.15 p.m. Or yesterday, 6.15 p.m. So I called up the post office and I'll admit the receptionist on the other side, the lady, was a little rude. Maybe it was because it was warm and she just wanted to get out of that office building, which is, you know, straight downtown. It's in a small area. It's in one of the buildings, buildings. Conjunct, uh, um, conjunct, uh, conjunction buildings or something like that that um, 
you know, it's in some, it's basically like, it's like when you go into a downtown area, you have all these stores and restaurants, the post office is right in that area, it's like in one of those buildings, so I can only assume that she wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. But when I told her and I gave her the tracking number, she said, it's still coming. Don't worry. Uh, just check back later if it doesn't. Here's my opinion of what I think happened. As soon as I told her that, probably somebody that's like a superior to her, her boss, probably overheard it. And probably said, well, can you check? Make sure that package is still going to make it. Because well, here's what I think, honestly. I think basically after she got off the phone, she probably did what she had to do, which is by protocol to check, make sure the route was complete. It or make sure the route was still going on, on and not finished. And that the mail carrier got all the packages and all the mail taken care of. So my thought is she probably went through that routine knowing that if she didn't go through that and maybe they keep records of the phone calls customers make uh, because of the, because of the mail you know, because of mail being misplaced or lost, uh, she probably called, talked to the carrier and said, can you check your mail? And the carrier probably checked the mail and goes like, oops, and probably realized, oh, I do have a package or two left over. I got to go back. Again, I'm just, it's my thought. I'm thinking either one or two things, like either maybe she had a superior, a boss next to her overhearing this and probably suggesting her to do that, or she just did it automatically knowing that they might keep records of phone calls that customers make uh, when it comes to this. But yeah, it came uh, yesterday, June 2nd, at 4.30 p.m. And like I said, you know, Frank Hill wanted to send me this for quite some time. Just, again, you know, if it wasn't for the stimulus, it probably wouldn't have happened. Um, and, and that's a fact. That is a true fact. It probably wouldn't have happened. Um... And, you know, a lot, and here's the thing. Truth is, when you don't get your stimulus, you don't know what the status of it, of it is, and you're going through financial problems, it, it gets to you. It does get to you. And uh, for Frank, and I say this with all due respect because I'm thankful for him doing what he's done for me and Zara Nizarek and Patrick Butler and all of us um, over the years. I mean, he doesn't really have to do this, but I'm thanking, I thank God that he do, he's able to do this out of the kindness of his heart. But Frank, kind of one day, just not that long ago, had a lot going on. I wasn't sure of his status until, until the stimulus came, thank God. And he was able to kind of get back on track. But he went through a lot. He was just going through a lot to the point that, like a lot of people, he goes online and he vents out at, you know, certain individuals. Like, you know, he says things he doesn't mean and all that. And that's kind of what he did with me. And I'm not sure if he did it with anybody else he sent packages to, but... I could kind of tell throughout the years that he was just venting, he was angry, and he didn't know how else to take out his anger. I've done that before, uh, various times, you know, uh, I've done that various times on here on the YT and on social media to the point that I've had to come on and apologize for my actions and stuff like that or for what I said. You know, a lot of people do that. And right now, this what's going on with the, the virus and now what's going on with the protests and the rioting. Thank, I think, thankfully, thank God, that's probably dying down, hopefully. Um, not the protesting, the peaceful protests, I'm all for. But the rioting that takes all these protests that are being done peacefully and respectfully and, being, and it's tossing it out the window, I'm not for that rioting. I'm not for that. Um... You know, but thankfully that rioting and looting, it seems, sounds like, in my opinion, it might be dying down now. So, so thank, you know, thank God for that. But yeah, you know, after he got a stimulus, everything was cool. Everything was fine. And, you know, he did kind of, when he messaged me back afterwards, you can kind of tell that, I can kind of tell that he didn't mean to say what he did. He didn't, he, you know, he, you know, he kind of in his own way apologized, but, um, you know, I, I can tell he didn't mean to say what he did because, you know, that's not him. That's that's not him. You know, that's not him. I'm just listening to my Ruko right there. Uh, but like I said, that's not really him. I mean, again, it gets to when you have a lot of the bills and stuff to take care of, you know, and you don't have the finances, it, it kind of gets to you and you have to just explode sometimes, just let it all out and then come back later and kind of be like, 
okay, maybe that wasn't, maybe I shouldn't have said that or anything, but, you know, that, that happens to a lot of us. Like I said, it's happened to me many times. But anyway, you know, I, again, and like I said, again, I thank God that we have people like him out of, who, out of the kindness of the heart, is able to do this, provide packages, you know, as much as they can, you know, just, you know, out of the kindness of the heart, you know, give people stuff that, you know, they wouldn't expect. And sometimes by surprise. So anyway, getting to this, he finally sent me this. And um, like I said, it was originally supposed to come on Monday, but because I think of what's going on, on, you know, if you watch the news, um, it kind of probably got delayed a little bit, but it is here. So what did Frank Hill send me? What did he send me that apparently um, was in the theaters, but was quickly out of theaters and almost to home video or home streaming and all that a little, a little afterwards, maybe months before because of the pandemic. Well, let's see, let's see what it is. And if it's what we all think it is, I think we'll all be happy. So we're going to open this, not to show the address or anything. And Oh, put it, in a, put it in a bag here. And there's nothing in there. So, what's in the bag, you might ask? Well, we got a letter. Oh, got two letters. Oh, he's got some questions on here <laughs> as well. Uh, take care from Frank. From it's Frank, uh, Frank Hill. Uh, okay, it's about. I'll get into those in a moment. The questions in a moment. But what did he send me? Well, he sent me a. Didn't just send me a plastic bag. He sent me the Steelbook 4K edition. Of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. How about that? Yeah, and I'm sure he sent the same to others. I'm sure he sent one to Zara Nicerak. I'm sure he sent one to uh, Patrick Butler. So yeah, he sent a, sent me this. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Really thankful for that. Thank you, um, Frank, for that. And again, he's been wanting. He was planning to send that, and then of course, everything kind of blew up the way it did and then finally just settled down so anyway we got some uh questions uh turn my, turn my uh, computer back on there get my glasses which apparently have been falling off a lot at work lately i probably have to get a new pair i mean i actually do have an extra pair here it's just um i don't wear them as much so kind of backups may have to result to them in a minute Okay, so questions that he has. Um, what are your thoughts about the canceled movie of Sonic the Hedgehog, Wonder of the World? Well, if it's a, if that's what I think it is with the kid and all that, um, I can't really say because I didn't even know they were making one under that name until, of course, you look on YouTube and, and the internet and you find that stuff out. So, But if it was going to be the way it was described, I, I'm kind of... I'll put it this way, Frank, and anybody else that's curious. I'm kind of glad that they didn't do it because what we got here with this movie, I think, is a better, better result. And what will be coming afterwards, I think, is even um, an even better idea. Okay, number two. What do you think about my idea cast? Jonathan Taylor Thomas as Josh, Danny DeVito as Robotnik. If that's for Wonder of the World, um, I, I I would say maybe it's a good idea. I mean, Jonathan Taylor Thomas was a was the uh, it kid at that time. Danny DeVito was still kind of re relevant when it came to movies till later on. Till of course he went off and did sitcoms, and now he's kind of getting relevant again with things like Dumbo and stuff. So yeah, it's a pretty good choice. But um, Honestly, like I said, I think it's just a, I think it's good that they didn't do the movie and what we got is a little bit better. Okay. 
Let's see. Sonic. Okay, next one. Sonic Armageddon was based on the Sonic the Hedgehog Archie comics. Almost got made, but got canceled because of Sonic X. Because of Sonic X was coming out. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't know about the Sonic X. The reasoning. Well, here's the thing. Sonic Armageddon was originally a Ken Penders idea. And, um, you know, Ken... I'll put it this way. I'll put it this way. Um, I, I, I mean, it did have the potential, especially if you want to do like a, a separate kind of alternate reboot continuity for Sonic and the Archie crew. And give them a different kind of origin of how things came to be. But uh, as far as it being cancelled because of Sonic X coming out, I don't know about that. I don't know if it, that was the reasoning. I mean, I have to read up on it a little bit more, but I don't think Sonic X was going to be the reasoning. I think more along the lines of, of the fact that, um, well, honestly, I, I think Sega was like, no, we're not going to let you do this. And I don't think Archie Comics was on board with it. And you got to remember that originally... Ben Hurst was going to do a, a movie, and I think Wind got, uh, were, I think uh, Sega and all of them got wind of what Ken did, and basically I think that kind of burned it to the ground. But uh, if it wasn't for Ken Penders doing what he did, according to a lot of people, and just kind of maybe working alongside Ben Hurst to probably do something like this, I think Sonic Armageddon could have been good. But I think honestly, it was more of a Kind of a rebooted continuity for an alternate version of, of the Archie Sadie Am cast. Okay, next one. Sonic Armageddon could have come out as direct-to-video and on DVD instead of the theaters. What do you think? Um, I think, okay. Well, that, I think, is probably the most likeliness because um, you got to remember that if this was being planned maybe... Around what, 99, 2000, 98, or something like that? You gotta remember, we, we were basically fresh. F we were freshly off Super Mario Brothers, you know, live action one. And yeah, that didn't do too well. So I think a directed video for Sonic Arm again probably would have been the best idea. Even if the animation stuff was good. Okay, next one. If Sonic Arm again did come out as direct to video and on DVD, the movie could be listed as not rated. What do you think? I think probably that's most likely. But, because you got to remember, at the time, there at the time, there was no consideration really of what a movie directly to video and, you know, DVD and all that. There was no real consideration of what the rating was going to be. I mean, to, uh, to give you an example, back in... 87, if I can just move this for a second, this here, G.I. Joe the movie, wasn't even, as you can see right there, if I can get make sure the camera sees that, uh, G.I. Joe the movie wasn't even given a rating. So, and it was originally going to be, I think, a PG movie that was going to be in theaters, but it didn't even get a rating. Eating when it went direct to the video and television, so so I think it, that would probably have been the most likely uh, case with the Sonic Armageddon movie if they'd done that. And more along the lines, like I said, you know, it wouldn't be until about almost the mid two thousands where the MPAA or the MPA would be like, okay, even these movies that are direct to video, whether they're animated or live action or CGI. They need a rating. So, there you go. Okay, next up. A uh, long time ago, there was plans for a Sonic the Hedgehog movie 2. It got cancelled for some reason. How do you feel about that? I'm talking about the anime movie. Okay, the, the anime movie... Here's the thing. When I first found out about the Sonic OVA, I was living in Kansas. I didn't even know about that. I didn't know about that till I went to the store that was uh, to the store that was uh, right like right across the street from me called Hastings, where I also worked at. 
it was kind of well it wasn't across the street it was like here was my apartment area and then here was Hastings so it's like I'd go through the back of the apartment complex go through a hole in the fence go through the parking lot because we used to have a theater a dollar theater right next door and we had an Uno Chicago like right down there too so across the street of course was Hastings and some other shops and that's how I found out about the OVA and I watched it and I bought it I'm thinking oh this is going to be yeah, this might be good and it was all right in my opinion I thought it was all right I mean I could definitely tell when I saw it. I was like oh this this is Sonic all right but it's a different kind of Sonic so um so I so, so that's how I found out about it and I enjoyed it I, I got a kick out of it um but as far as the sequel to it goes it's it's kind of hard of how what direction they would have done i think that's probably what made it get canceled was they weren't sure exactly what direction they were going to go with when it came uh to the sequel it's like okay where you go from the ending of the first one to the next and honestly if they were going to do a sequel I think that meant they had plans to do an anime back then before Sonic X even became a, uh, a reality. So, so I, that's my thoughts on that. But uh, yeah, I think it was more along the lines of they weren't sure exactly what direction to go in next. Okay, how would you feel if the Princess Sally video game did get made? Okay, so he, that, that's a unique idea because I think there was rumors that she was going to get a game uh, eventually. Um, but, and, and I think the reason the rumors started out about that and speculation and discussion started, started about that was, of course, what was I say? Hey everybody, yeah, sorry about the abrupt interruption there, uh, but what was I, oh yeah, I was uh, talking about the OVA and why it didn't get made a sequel at least. Okay, so the second one Frank has here for, for me is, how would you feel if the, oh yeah, how would I feel if the Princess Sally video game, uh, uh, what, what does it say, uh, let me get my glasses again, <laughs> sorry about that guys, um, Oh, how it did get made. Okay, how would I feel if the Princess Sally game did get made? Uh, well, like I said, uh, there was speculation. Um, I, I, there was word going around, I don't from what I understand, that they were considering doing a game with her. And I think this might have been around the late 90s, early 2000s. Well, late 90s throughout the early to mid 2000s. And the reason they were considering it, though, was due to the fact that her popularity had skyrocketed more so than I think they could have imagined. Uh, to the point that uh, when Sega World uh, did the Sega Land theme park, or Sega World theme park in Australia, one of the attractions was, of course, the Sonic in Sydney, the Sonic in Sydney um, stage show, which was originally done by puppets. Well, not by puppets, but by people in a costume, as well as um, uh, basically people, uh, as well as puppets later on. But basically, it was a stage show, and one of the featured characters, of course, um, was Sally. Of course, I have her up here, because usually when I make my bed, she's right here, along with Sonic and Blaze and uh, Judy and then the rest here. Uh, but yeah, one of them was Sally, and this is the and this here is one of the official Sally plushes that I got off eBay back in two thousand seven for about two hundred something dollars. Uh, but anyway, yeah, back on point. That's the only reason I think she was being considered because her popularity was more was more than you know had gotten more um, noticed and more. Um, acknowledged and i think sega imagined which is why i think one they put her in to the sonic and sydney australia uh, sonic and sydney show in australia 
um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm saying that they put her in there. But I think it's also because of the fact that she was going on, she was becoming on par with the likes of a Jean Grey, a Rogue, a Storm, a Mary Jane, um, a Wonder Woman, a Supergirl, you name it. You know, she was becoming on par with those female heroines in other comics. So that's why I think she was being considered for a game. Um, the reason it didn't happen, of course, is because what they originally uh, had planned, the Sonic Mars game and all that, got scrapped, rechanged to Sonic Jam, and then the rest is history. And then you, you got around to Sonic Adventure, and I think someone in Japan probably got wind of Sally becoming probably more popular than even Amy. And they figured, nope, Amy's a video game character. She's a video game creation. She's going to become, you know, the female face of, of the Sonic franchise as far as games are concerned. And that's how I think, maybe in my opinion, Amy got her redesign. All right, so next question is, how would you feel if they made a live-action movie of Sonic Set AM? Well, I'll say this. If they made a live-action movie on Sonic Set AM, then... <laughs> Count me in as one of the first to buy a ticket. <laughs> um, I think they do have all the elements like from this game, uh, from this movie that can really help them make a, a Sonic Set AM film. And I even said in my Topics of My Mind um, live stream I did on Monday, uh, early Monday, uh, to, on Monday morning I should say, that, you know, one of the characters people would ba basically blow up at the theaters from seeing on the big screen, especially in an end credit scene for a possible third movie, is Sally. I mean, I think tr trains. I think the one of the super chat, one of the live chatters on the live stream trains, even agreed that you know the, the cinema would blow the roof off. There is no doubt. I mean, I made a comparison to when um, X Two ended. And we saw the silhouette of the phoenix um, under the water. And the whole place just erupted. The whole place just exploded out of excitement. Because they've been wanting the phoenix. That was one of the more anticipated characters. So, yeah. So, I, would, I, I wouldn't I would say it would be on that level of excitement. Or, in, you know, excitement and, you know... Well, I wouldn't, what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't say it's going to be on that level of excitement, but I'd say it'd be just about there. It would be, I would say it'd be around there, but just a little below, but still, you'd definitely, I mean, imagine you're somebody walking out of your movie, walking past the theater with the Sonic 2 movie coming to a close, and all of a sudden you're hearing all this applause and everything, and then you ask the person, well, what was that about? And they say, oh, you got to see the movie for yourself, and if they say, oh, well, I've seen the movie, I just didn't stay for the end credits, then they tell you, oh, they just showed Sally, Sally Acorn from Sonic at AM in the Archie Comics. So, so to me, so yeah, like I said on my live stream, I think that'd be one of the things, you know, one of the one of the characters that fans would love to see in a third movie, especially, you know, especially if at the end of the second movie, it kind of gives us that idea that's what's going to happen. But I think by doing this, they pretty much plant the seeds for something like a Sonic Sat AM live action film to to occur. And last but not least, how do you feel about Ken Penders after watching the Midnight Edge's interview? Well, here's the thing. I didn't watch Midnight Edge's interview with Ken all, all the way through. Um, but I'm probably going to have to eventually. But I could... Here's the thing. This one thing we've learned, or I've learned, from watching Dark Side of the Ring, which is a wrestling documentary series that I do recommend you watch, is... There's always two sides of the story, and then sometimes the side you don't always hear from is the ends up being the more believable, more legit, more truthful side than the other side you've been hearing from for the past several years or decades. A good example of that, check out the season two finale on Owen Hart and hear what Martha has to say on what happened to her husband and stuff, and others have had to say. But I... I Again, I haven't seen Ken's interview fully with Midnight Edge, but I can say that I could tell just by the moments and clips I have seen that he does have a different side of things going on the way they did. So um, I'll probably have to watch it later on um, when I get a chance. Uh, hopefully, hopefully soon. Uh, but 
that's about all the questions he sent me. I'm pretty sure he sent Zara Nizarek similar questions as well as Patrick Butler and others. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Frank, for that. And thank you very much for this. As a matter of fact, I think, I think I will open this while I have it. So open it, and one of the advertisements is it comes with a comic. So we're going to slip this baby out. And here's the comic. It's pretty cool. It's done in a 16-bit style. So that's nice. And then, of course, here's the steelbook. Got Sonic on one end, and you got Dr. Robotnik, Eggman on the other, played by Jim Carrey, of course. And then on the inside, uh, just move this for a second. You have the Ultra HD, you have the Blu ray, and you got a you got, like I said, you got the Ultra HD, you got the Blu ray, and then you got a nice inside cover. Um, as well, so that's pretty cool. It's a two disc deal. It's it's done in a way that some people like. I think Zero Nizerak has even said, talked about this that it's not one of the more favorable ways of doing it. But you know what are you gonna do? I don't even know how they did this. <laughs> that's weird. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, there we go. But it covers up the other one. Yeah. It's kind of a weird design here. Oh, oh, I see. I see. There it goes. <laughs> I see. It goes like that. Okay. That's pretty cool. You slip it in on the other one. But yeah, nice, really nice. So, um, and they got advertisements for some Sonic stuff and some other movies by them, uh, as well. So, pretty nice. So, thank you very much for that, Frank. He'll really appreciate that. Can't fit the comic in there, of course. <laughs> Gotta stick it back onto the back, but it's sticky. And then, of course, I got the little sticker to let you know that that's what's in there. So, what we'll do is um we'll carefully place it on there just like if it didn't have this <laughs> so yeah there we go so thank you very much for that frank you really appreciate that put the 4k slip on it again so so you complete but yeah thank you very much for this frank you really appreciate it and here's hoping that we'll have more to add to the collection um, in the near future. So thank you all for watching. Thank you Frank Hill for this. And uh, that's all I'm going to say guys. And I will talk to you all later. God bless. Take care.